Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Paschal, the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to enter this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem, Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples ahead of him, saying, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should ask you anything, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so as what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat down upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks along the road, while others cut their branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following him kept crying out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of, of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue 
that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dios mío, Dios mío, por qué me has abandonado? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dios mío, Dios mío, por qué me has abandonado? All who see me scoff at me. They mark, mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dios mío, Dios mío, ¿por qué me has abandonado? Los malvados me cercan por doquiera, como rabiosos perros. Mis manos y mis pies han taladrado, y se pueden contar todos mis huesos. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dios mío, Dios mío, ¿Por qué me has abandonado? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dios mío, Dios mío, ¿por qué me has abandonado? Contaré tu fama a mis hermanos, En medio de la asamblea te alabaré. Fieles del Señor, alábenlo. Glorificarlo, linaje de Jacob. Temelo, estirpe de Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Dios mío, Dios mío, ¿por qué me has abandonado? Lectura de la Carta de San Pablo a los Felipenses Cristo, siendo Dios, no consideró que debía aferrarse a las prerrogativas de su condición divina, sino que, por el contrario, se anonadó a sí mismo, tomando la condición de siervo, y se hizo semejante a los hombres. Así, hecho uno de ellos, se humilló a sí mismo, y por obediencia aceptó incluso la muerte, y una muerte de cruz. Por eso Dios lo exaltó sobre todas las cosas, y le otorgó el nombre que está sobre todo nombre, para que al nombre de Jesús todos doblen la rodilla, en el cielo en la tierra y en los abismos, y todos reconozcan públicamente que Jesucristo es el Señor, para gloria de Dios Padre. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is the blood of the covenant which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to each of them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My Father, If it is not possible that this cup pass without me drinking, my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still asleep and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to the sword 
drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, and he would not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as a, against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the Pharisees, the elders, were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony of, against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the, know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, Seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now, Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. 
Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, which one, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole co cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of a cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you're the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he's the king of Israel? Let him, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you have forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge, soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. 
The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in the new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go. Secure it, as be- secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, each of the four accounts, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, wrote about the passion and death of Jesus, are chock full of personalities, conversations, and dramatic scenes, literally of death and life, conflicts. I'd like to think with you about one scene, because it has trees in it. Not the graceful Judean palm trees, which were date palms used for their supposed medicinal uh, properties to cure many diseases and infections, promoting longevity, and even, rumors were, a mild aphrodisiac. Not those trees. Even if they're the trees whose branches give the distinctive name to the Sunday we celebrate today. I'm thinking of the other trees mentioned in the story, gnarly, twisted, and most would judge and not beautiful at all, trees in Jerusalem in the garden where Jesus Christ prayed before he was crucified. In the language Jesus spoke, Gethsemane, the name of the place, was a reference to those trees. Gethsemane means an olive press. After two millennia, that garden still exists. No one's quite sure where the Garden of Eden went, but the Garden of Olives is alive and well in Jerusalem, or just outside the walls of the ancient city. And there, yes, there are ancient, gnarly olive trees there. A little over seven years ago, a scientific analysis was made of the oldest trees in the garden. And the results were published that dated three of those trees to at least 900 years old. The results of those tests on the trees in the Garden of Gethsemane have not settled the question whether today's trees are the very same which sheltered Jesus in his agony. 
because olive trees can grow back from roots after being cut down, the researchers said. They also stated the plants of greater age than those olive trees are not found in scientific literature. The leader of the study wrote, our olives are considered the oldest broad-leafed trees in the world. So what did those trees, or their immediate ancestors, witness that spring night? They saw the scandalously shocking consequence of the word made flesh. The one named Emmanuel, whose name means God is with us, experiences sorrow so dark and toxic that it alone seems able to kill him. Those ancient trees heard him say to his closest friends, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Then, soon after finding them asleep, he asks with anguish, so you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, what do you suppose this test is? Jesus had already referred to the final form of it when he first taught his disciples to pray. You remember how they asked him to teach them how to speak to God. He taught them, and he taught us to end that prayer with a fervent plea, and do not subject us to the test, but deliver us from evil, or in some translations, the evil one. The test is simply circumstances when evil appears to gain the upper hand. In its final form, or in moments that we're suffering right now. We can see what happens to disciples under the weight of the test. One betrays, another denies, and the rest scatter. Previously stated good intentions are not enough to save them. Since Jesus knows that we are hardwired to fail such tests, he can speak with absolute authority about the weakness of humanity because he's one of us in all things but sin. And as the trees witness in horror, his faithfulness to the Father hangs in a balance. He begs the Father to let the cup pass without him drinking from it. My brothers and sisters, over the last weeks, a number of people have asked me a serious question. Is this pandemic and its consequences the beginning of the final exam? the end of the world? I reply, I don't know. But I do believe it is a test, a time when evil appears to gain the upper hand. Certainly the pandemic threatens to separate us from one another, and more importantly, from the love of God. So I believe that Holy Week 2020 has a crucial importance for all of us. The celebration of Holy Week has always been and remains a word of encouragement for those beaten down by life, concretely by the cross that is always present in one form or another in life. The story first witnessed by those old trees is that God is with us and there is hope, there is room for hope in our world today. Although we've celebrated many Holy Weeks, we need to watch and pray with Jesus this week so as not to despair 
in the face of a world where death in all of its forms is still present. As hard as it is to see him, the God of life triumphs over death. Brothers and sisters, this is our faith. Hermanos y hermanas muy queridos en Jesucristo, hoy escuchamos con toda la iglesia el relato de la pasión según San Mateo. Es una relación apasionante que va del denuncio a cumplimiento. Hay un punto central en el relato. Justo en el momento en que va a ser arrestado, Jesús proclama, ha llegado la hora. A partir de ese momento, lo que en la primera parte del relato ha sido un anuncio, se va cumpliendo poco a poco. La primera parte es el relato de la última cena, momento en el que Jesús, al bendecir el pan y el vino, los refiere a sí mismo y a su propia entrega. Ellos son y serán para siempre el signo de la nueva alianza entre Dios y los hombres y mujeres. Una nueva época está a punto de empezar, pero pasará necesariamente por la muerte de Jesús. En ese contexto, Entendemos el anuncio de la traición de Judas y las negaciones de Pedro. En ese contexto, y en la soledad del monte de Olivos, y en el jardín de Gesemaní, compartimos el temor ante la muerte que experimenta Jesús. Un temor que no queda muy lejos de nosotros en estos días. El relato culmina con la muerte de Jesús. Para llegar ahí, Jesús ha sido juzgado injustamente y ha sido torturado por los servidores del poder que se aprovechan de su situación para abusar a los indefensos. Hermanos, siempre el poder ha tenido lacayos a su servicio que le hacen el trabajo sucio. Nunca son los mismos que los condenan y los que torturan o clavan en la cruz o fusilan. A pesar de todo, Jesús muere creyendo en la esperanza. Las últimas palabras que San Mateo pone en su boca, los mismos que él puso en nuestra boca en el Salmo responsorial hoy, es el principio del Salmo 22. Es un salmo en que una persona experimenta el dolor, el sufrimiento y el abandono de Dios en ese sufrimiento. Pero al final proclama su esperanza en la fuerza y la gracia de Dios que salva y da vida a los que creen en él. Sin duda, San Mateo quiso expresar de esa manera cuáles eran los sentimientos de Jesús en los últimos momentos de su vida terrena. Hermanos y hermanas, la celebración de la Semana Santa ha sido y es para los abatidos por la vida, por la cruz que siempre está presente en ella, una palabra de aliento. Dios está con nosotros y en nuestro mundo hay un lugar para la esperanza. Aunque hayamos celebrado muchas sema, semanas santas, nos sigue haciendo falta hacer memoria de Jesús, Jesús de Nazaret para no desesperar frente a un mundo donde la muerte, en todas sus formas, sigue estando presente. Por más que nos cueste verlo, el Dios de la vida triunfa sobre la muerte. Hermanos y hermanas, esta es nuestra fe.
using the Apostles' Creed, we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Queridos hermanos, siempre debemos elevar nuestras súplicas a Dios, nuestro Padre. Pero en estos días de Semana Santa, es necesario dirigirle a Él nuestras oraciones con más insistencia, unidos más conscientemente a su Hijo, Jesucristo. La respuesta, te rogamos, Señor. The response, Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por la tranquilidad y la paz en todo el mundo, para que nuestros días transcurran llenos de gracia y salvación, roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor. That peoples in need may find help and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos lo que padecen necesidad y sufren tentación, para que sean fortalecidos con la gracia del Señor, roguemos al Señor. Lord, For the sick, most especially those stricken with the flu and the coronavirus, May God relieve them of their suffering and bring healing into the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por todos los candidatos que se preparan a formar parte de la comunidad de la fe católica, que confiar, confiando en la verdad de Cristo puedan alcanzar la libertad de mente y corazón y empiecen su vida nuevo en el nombre del Señor. Roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those you make sharers in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bendito sea, Señor Dios del Universo, por este pan, fruto de la tierra, del trabajo del hombre que recibimos de tu generosidad, y ahora te presentamos, y será para nosotros pan de vida eterna. Bendito seas por siempre, Señor. Bendito sea, Señor Dios del Universo, por este vino, fruto de la vida y del trabajo del hombre que recibimos de tu, tu generosidad, y Él será para nosotros de vida y salvación. Bendito seas por siempre, Señor. Y a los contritos que han quedado. Lado de mis pecados que quiero limpiar. Oren, hermanos y hermanas, para que este sacrificio mío y suyo sea agradable a Dios Padre Todopoderoso. Que el Señor reciba de tus manos este sacrificio para la alabanza y gloria de su nombre, para nuestro bien y de toda su santa iglesia. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O oh Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her into the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor. Concede la paz en nuestros días, para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, Vivamos siempre libres del pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación, mientras esperamos la venida gloriosa de nuestro Salvador, Jesucristo. Tuyo es el reino, tuyo el poder y la gloria por siempre, Señor. 
Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia, y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad, tú que vives a renas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz de, del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el, el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, danos la paz. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, yo no soy digno de que entres en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanarme. Oremos, tú que nos has alimentado con esta Eucaristía y por medio de la muerte de tu Hijo, nos das la esperanza de alcanzar lo que la fe nos promete. Concédenos, Señor, llegar por medio de su resurrección a la meta de nuestras esperanzas. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. We pray the prayer that Pope Francis has written for this moment of pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need. And we are sure that you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. 
Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Before I ask God's blessing, I'd like to thank all of the members of the Archdiocese of Newark and beyond who are taking part in this celebration of the Eucharist. I recognize in a special way the, my fellow ministers here in the Lady Chapel of the Cathedral of the Basilica of the Sacred Heart, the Mother Church of the Archdiocese. Our uh, Chancellor, Sister Donna Sanju, one of our seminarians, uh, Miss, Mr. Lynx Solomon, and our associate in, in operations, Mr. Sean Ryan. Thank you to our technicians who are also here present. I invite you to look at the website to get the latest information on the Holy Week schedule of celebrations here at the Lady Chapel. I hope you can participate in some of them. I would also mention that there'll be video messages later in the week in English and in Spanish to the Archdiocese, as well as a message to my brother priests. Les agradezco mucho por su participación en esta celebración eucarística. Que ustedes pasen por el site web en el internet de la Arquidiócesis de Newark por más información sobre el horario de celebraciones litúrgicas durante el triduo de Jueves Santo, Viernes Santo y la Vigilia de Pascua. Que el Señor sigue protegiendo sus familias y que sigue muy encendida la llama de esperanza en nuestros corazones. El Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Dios y Padre nuestro, mira con bondad a esta familia suya, por la cual nuestro Señor Jesucristo no dudó en entregarse a sus verdugos y padecer el tormento de la cruz. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glorify the Lord with your lives. Go Amen. in peace. Thanks be to God.